Have I said, thank you so much for joining us today on Beauty Business Breakthroughs. I am very, very excited to be introducing you to Philip, who is our SEO expert. Philip, thank you again for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited as well. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you mentioned, you know, prior to our call, you're from Denmark. So time zone difference. I really appreciate you making the time to connect with us, even with the vast time difference. So, but tell us a little bit about your, your background, your expertise. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Denmark is, is super cold at the moment. I think we have minus eight degrees or something like that Celsius. So it's really interesting. Yeah. And, and I think we have, we have, if we are lucky, we have four hours of sunlight. <laughs> no, we have a little bit more, but it's horrible. Uh, it's horrible at the moment. We just need to get through the winter. We, we have this very, very bad joke in Denmark where we say that the summer is the best day of the year. So it's like, yeah, but it's, it's great the though. It's still great. Day. Yeah, okay. So exactly. just for, you know, the civil background. So Denmark doesn't have the most sunlight and warm weather. Okay. So it's a very cold climate area. Got it. it is, so do you yeah. like it is. that weather? Is that what you enjoy? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm mostly like warm weather. That's also why I, in, in the past I've lived in, in Lisbon in Portugal and I've lived a little okay. bit in Germany as well because I really thrive in, in the warm weather. That's that's for sure. Um, okay. But uh, just to dive a little bit back into, into my background then, it's funny because I started when I was 13 programming and I've always okay. been this nerd about technical stuff and and I programmed up until I was 20 something. I'm 30 today. And in my beginnings of my 20s, I started to look into SEO. And I still found the technical aspect of SEO super interesting because there were still some technical things that you could twist and turn. And you can take SEO from a super basic level and really nerd it out and just go super advanced. But you can still really move the needle on just doing super basic stuff and beat your competition. And it doesn't take a lot. But I think that a lot of people are just scared of it because they just see, okay, SEO, search engine optimization. I have no idea what to do. And they see other people do super advanced stuff, which is also great, but you don't have to do all that advanced stuff. You can start super basic and still get a ton of value out of it. You just need to have patience. Right. Yeah, I definitely agree. Like I said before, when it comes to SEO and getting started, no matter what, industry you're in right um i think that it's it is something that is overwhelming because the majority of people it's really just a lack of knowledge understanding education right and there are so many different factors that are involved with the seo so tell me again you know you did mention and, and i like to kind of break things down for the listeners and whatnot so search engine engine optimization primarily that's focused or i don't even want to say focused primarily most people know about that when it pertains to google or search engines like bing yahoo things of that nature. But now a lot of these other apps and social media platforms and things of that nature have also taken on those same concepts, right? When it comes to the search bomber and searching different things along those lines. So tell me a little bit about how somebody who is starting out can just not only educate themselves, but really just start to to get the needle moved, if you will. Yeah, for sure. It's it's a great question. And you can really, let me try and take it down on super basic level. The first thing that you have to do is that you need to get a website. And as you mentioned, a lot of your listeners, they have a booking website. And if you can write content, then it's completely fine. Then you can, then you can use the booking website. Because SEO in its essence is basically just content. You need to write right. content and you can do it in a lot of ways. And I think you shouldn't be too scared of writing content that's helping the potential customer in this case. Because let's say that you are doing lashes, for example, and you have different right. types of products within lashes. You can do guides on how they can do lashes themselves. Because it's super important to remember that people who are searching for that information 
they might not necessarily become your customer anyway because they have the intent that they want to do it themselves. But once they see your expertise, they see how you explain it, they see how you do it, then you slowly just roll them in and then they might become a customer in the end. So don't be scared of this part. You basically just need to get started. And the first thing you just need to do is write a piece of content. And this can also be towards your services. So you can take each of your services and then write content for those services on a specific page. Because the more content you have, the easier it is for also for Google to understand. So when I go in and let's say that I wanted a set of uh, single lashes, for example, then Google understands that you provide that as a service because you've written about it. Google can see that you have expertise within because you're selling it as a service. You might have some years of experience and you're talking about that in your content. And that's basically how you get started. Then you just take it slowly from there. And then you can, of course, you can level up to a lot of levels from there. But that's the super basic way of getting started. It doesn't have to be more difficult than that. You don't have to install thousands of plugins and designs and systems and stuff like that. Just basically take one of your services and start writing about that and then move on from there. That is a great idea. You know, I think I like the fact that you you mention not only the SEO aspect of it and, you know, kind of writing a piece of content or some may describe that as a blog or something along those lines, but talking about your educating your follower, you're educating your ideal client, right? In terms of the DIY, right? But what ends up happening is a natural progression especially if you are nurturing that client or that follower, right? Where they come to you as a DIY because they like, okay, she's got good techniques or she's got great skills. I like the products that she uses, whatever. And then the natural progression is, you know what? Forget this. I don't even want to do it myself anymore. I like her skill. Let me just come to her because she does the technique or the style or the whatever that I like, and I'll just have her do it instead. So I like that concept of the more value that you're providing your potential client or your ideal client avatar, that you're actually attracting them and then naturally progress into them getting services done by you. That's great. So how would somebody then be able to make sure that the content that they are providing, the keywords, the long tail keywords, the should they use hashtags, there's some free tools out there to where they want to make sure that they're using some of these keywords in their content, right? So that it is showing up on Google and making sure like, for instance, how many times is this word or this phrase searched for in a month, that kind of thing, where would they be able to, to figure out how to implement that? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It makes complete sense. And, and <laughs> there are hundreds of tools out there, but I think if you need like a free tool just to get started, then a tool mm-hmm. called Uber suggest that's super cool and it's free to use. And what you can basically do is just open it up and I'll just use the single lashes example. Again, you can type in single lashes. And not only will it show how many searches there are monthly for single lashes, but it will also show related searches and related Mm. keywords. So people might search uh, how much does it cost to get a set of single lashes or how long Mm. does single lashes last and any Mm. type of question like this. And that's the content you want to cover on your blog. So you want to write all of these and you can often combine all of these subjects into one subject, one article, and then you can write about that. And that's basically what you need to focus on, like including specific keywords that will come naturally once you start writing it. But it's just important that you cover all of these subjects. But another free way of doing it is actually using Google. So you can go on Google and then you can search for single lashes. And then on each search, almost Google has this section called people also ask. Those are related questions that people also ask, which are relevant to your question or to your query. And those you can also take and either cover in the same piece of content, or you can write a new piece of content and then cover those subjects. And the more you write of all these subjects, the more Google also sees you as an authority on single lashes in this case. And then you'll be chosen more and more to be the first result in Google. And when you're the first result in Google, you get tons of traffic. 
and traffic. Right. You just need to convert to customers and so on. So that's how it runs all the time. So Uber Suggest and Google are two free tools you can use to find keywords that you can write for. And there is one more thing to be aware of, and that's a keyword difficulty score. So you yes. want the keyword difficulty score to be as low as possible for your domain, sorry, for your keyword. And that's because the lower the keyword difficulty score is, the easier it is for you to rank number one for this specific keyword. So start with a keyword difficulty score below 10, if you can. Sometimes they're a bit difficult to find, but if you can, and then slowly work your way up from there. And there are a lot of other stuff that goes into it, but on a basic level, if you do this, you're really, really far ahead from your competition. Yeah, no, I think that's really good to know. And Uber suggests is one that I have used myself. And I've even used the Google tool, like you said, searching a topic, whatever, how to this or whatever. And I've actually mm -hmm. used that same thing on Google where it says people also search for. And I have used that when it pertains to content, coming up with ideas for content, because I want to make sure that I am providing the content that people are looking for. And so one thing I think it's good to know is that every time you click on that little drop down for whatever the suggested question is, it's going to keep providing more and more ideas, right? So like you say, it might be some similar questions or similar phrases, right? That people search and you can include it in that same content that you're developing. Or it might give you something that is a little bit different, right? So you go, okay, well, this may not fit for this piece of content, but this is great for another piece of content or another blog that I put on my website because this is something that I can see my ideal client looking for. So I think it's really important to know that this is not only something that people can do on their website or even on their booking site, maybe even in their social media platforms, in their caption and things along those lines, right? Because when you're going to Google something, it's going to pull up everything that's related to that, that content, right? But I think it's really important to focus and kind of inform our, our listeners that this is a free tool, right? So this is not paying sponsored ads or paying Google or Facebook ads. This is something that they can do on their website, on their booking or social media for free. So when you search for something, you first couple, two or three things that come up are sponsored ads, right? And it'll say sponsored ad. And then the very next ones are going to be whatever is the organic search based on what people are putting into on their SEO, on their piece of content and things of that, of that nature. So can you just talk a little bit about the value that comes with the organic search? I know for myself, when I'm looking at things from as an end user, right. Or as a consumer, I'm going to look more for the organic search results than I am a sponsor. So let's just talk about the value of that. Exactly. Yeah. And, and and there's two things about that, as you say it right there, I often also use the organic results. And that's because the organic results are often much more related to your query, where, whereas the ads, they're a bit more generic because they're trying with the same text to cover a lot of area and a lot of different questions. So that's why Absolutely. these organic, yeah. So that's why these organic results, they're just so good. And And the funny thing is that Writing for these organic results is something you do once and then you will optimize it a couple of times a year, but it doesn't take that much time to maintain. And often if you write a good piece of content, you can rank number one for years without touching it and you will just, you will get so much traffic from it. And that's why you have to see it as an initial investment and then it can take a couple of months before you rank for it. But if you write a good piece of content and you rank number one and solid piece of content, then you will rank number one for a long, long time. And you'll just get more and more traffic from this specific query. That's mm -hmm. why it's super interesting. So you need to see it as an investment. You invest your time in the beginning. And then from there, you just get it back over and over. I've seen cases where people, they have written a piece of content eight years ago and they get thousands of visitors just for this piece of content. 
So it's really, really super, super interesting. And one thing that we haven't talked so much about is the converting the actual people that comes in on the page, because that's, of course, what we want to do with the content. We want to get customers based on the content. So what you can do is that you need to figure out what your CTA, your call to action should be for your content. So a call to action, for example, could be that they need to go to follow you on Instagram. They need to go follow you on Facebook, TikTok, wherever it is that you're super active. Or maybe even you have a newsletter that they have to sign up for that. Because when people come in on these organic results, it's not always that they're ready to just buy your services. You need to Absolutely. slowly convert them. And this you can do through your social media or your newsletters. And that's also, as you said, Shara, you need to nurture them to make them become your customers. So see content as the first step. From there, you need to convert them to either a follow on social media, a newsletter, and then from there, you can slowly convert them into a customer. And that's the whole idea with the content. Of course, we're writing to get traffic, but we want to convert the traffic so we can earn based on it. I love that. Yeah, that's so good to point out, you know, and I appreciate that feedback as well, because when I have done blogs on my website as well, that is something that I, I fail to do is at the end of the blog, making sure that I have that call to action. You know, I'm very well aware, making sure that I am nurturing my, my followers and nurturing my subscribers and things of that nature. Right. But making sure that on my piece of content, having that call to option, whether it be signing up for my newsletter or subscribing to my newsletter or whatever, or even just following me on social media so that I can then build that relationship with my follower, gain their trust and convert them into a, a client, a student, a whatever it is that I'm providing. I think that's really, really good to point out. Any other tips or things? I, I know that this is something that people can do for themselves, like you said, but what if they've done that and they've done it for themselves and they say, hey, I want to take it a step further. I want to go to that next level and I want to get real nerdy with it. And uh, what is it that they would do? They would probably hire somebody like yourself to come in on their, their website, their booking platform, their whatever, and tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So if you want to, to do it yourself, then you can sign up for something called Google Search Console, which is completely free to sign up for. And Google Search Console is incredible to optimize your content because what Google Search Console will tell you is what type of search queries is your content getting impressions from. So even though you think that you're writing your piece of content for how much does single lashes cost, but your piece of content will rank for hundreds of other keywords. And based on that, then either you will optimize your current piece of content to also be a great piece of content for those searches, or you'll write a new piece of content for that search. So you will get a lot of related searches and these searches are directly from Google. So you know the source is credible and you can write content for it. That's one part of it. Another part is that you can also see how many clicks you get for specific search queries on your specific piece of content. So you can also see what piece of content is maybe converting better than others. And by converting, I mean how many clicks they get, because that's down to the title you optimize for your blog post and something called a meta description. And the meta description is this very short text that we see on Google, which is 160 characters or a little bit below that we see below the title. Those two have a huge impact on how many clicks you get. And then from there, they need to, of course, re read your content and so on. But Google Search Console is definitely the first step. After you've written some pieces of content, sign up for that because you get so much data. And then from there, of course, you can continue to educate yourself. You can start looking into something called internal link building, where you interlink all your blog posts together. So you show Google that specific blog posts are related to each other. And mm -hmm. then there are backlinks and there are so much you can dive into. But also if you don't want to dive into that, then you can hire someone like me, an SEO consultant that goes in and basically runs through your entire website, runs something called a site audit where we go through your entire website from a technical standpoint. And there's just so many aspects to SEO. But if you want to do it yourself, start on a basic level, write some content, sign up for Google Search Console, and then slowly build your way up from there. Take it one step at a time. If you try to do everything at once, you will 
yeah, you will get overwhelmed. There is so much. Right, right. I 100% agree with that. Like you will definitely get overwhelmed. And at the same time, when you're trying to tackle everything at once, you are making changes and you don't even know what's working and what isn't. So I think Google Search Console is such a great tool, like you said, for you to kind of just analyze and be able to really get some of that data and feedback and say, okay, what's working? What isn't working? What do I need to optimize? What do I need to work on? And then I think too, it's a great tool for them to say, oh, okay, well, I didn't even think about this content people are clicking on. So this is great. Like this is getting a lot of traction. I really need to create piece of content or this topic or this search or whatever the case may be. This is great. So anything else that you would just like to add before we close out? Of course, I would love to be able to offer my followers a way to contact you and get in and follow you and and all of that good stuff. Yeah, for sure. I, I think like from, from here, I just want to say that uh, if you want to know more and, and learn about what I do, then you can follow me on Twitter where I'm super active under my name, Philip Steeman. And here I also share basic SEO tips to more advanced SEO tips. And then from there, you can just take what you want. On top of that, then I have a newsletter where I share one actionable SEO tip every single week, which takes less than five minutes to implement on your website. And it gives a huge impact. And I keep it on a super low level language so everyone can understand and implement it on their website, including guides and everything. So definitely check out on, on my website, philipsteeman.com, then on Twitter as well. Okay. And can you spell your first and last name just for our followers in case? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. It's, a, yeah, it's P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S-T-E-M-A-N-N.com. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Thank you again, <laughs> Philip. I really appreciate your feedback and your education, your knowledge. I think it's great for the followers, like you said, kind of just, you know, breaking down some of the basics and uh, really providing them some actionable items. I'm personally looking forward to signing up for your newsletter so that I can get some of that, that content as well and be able to make some simple changes. So awesome. Definitely. Thank you again. And I look thank forward you. to connecting with you. Yeah. Thank you for having me.